church. Happy Valentine's. Do you feel the love in the church? Tell your neighbor, I love you. I love you, Ohana. <laughs> come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never is dry.
we could never trust your love without your word we thank you because we can trust your word it is everlasting it will not pass away it has stood the test of time we thank you Jesus because you handed down this word through your sacrifice and we receive your love tonight thank you Lord Bless us tonight, bless our hearts, and bless the word. Amen. Turn with me to James chapter 3, verse 9. Praise the Lord for this night and his grace toward us. Praise the Lord for missions and this week, next week, well, we are introducing this week, next week, that is uh, missions week. Next week is missions week and prayer for missions for the summer. And uh, I would like you to read this verse with me. Uh, I want you to also do a exercise. But before we, let's pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, praise you. Thank you for this assembly. 
Thank you for your love for us. For your Holy Spirit that anoints us to walk by faith. And lead us, Lord, as an assembly with other assemblies around the world. Where we lift you up in our personal life, in our hearts, and honor you in truth. And you visit us in the night season. You give us a weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Your grace abounds toward us. We are objects of your love. We want to be loved tonight, Lord, by your Holy Spirit in our assembly to love us, to give us your understanding and mind and your heart. Thank you, Lord. Even heal someone in your name, God. Heal someone in your name as they listen to the word and believe you and trust you. We are vessels of faith. We've come in your name. We put our trust in you. Shower us, Lord. Shower us with your great grace and your love. That everyone leaving tonight would know that you love them. You love them with an everlasting love. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Read that verse with me, James 3, verse 9. There would bless we God with our tongue, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. So we curse men that are made after the image of God. That's the idea there. Who is made in the image of God? Are the people that live in Buddhist countries, are they made in the image of God? Yes. yes. Muslim countries, Hindu countries, yes, they're made in the image of God. When I look at the faces of people around the world, different countries, and you just lo love them, they look at their face and you just see you can, you can see if you look at it, if you look at the person and you can see the image of God. What is that, anyway? What is that, the image of God? I think sometimes when you look at a man and you look at him and you think, does he have a wife? A child, does he love his family? Yeah, he loves his family. Would he protect his family? Yes. Is he saved? No, he's not saved. He's not a Christian. He's not saved. He's a, in a communist country, but he loves his family. Why does he love his family? Because he's made in the image of God. Uh, does he know about right and wrong? Yeah, he does. He knows about it. It's in him, written in his heart. Why? Why does he know that? Because he's in the, made in the image of God. Everyone in the world, every human being in the earth is made in God's image. Are they, are they children of God? No, but they are. They are not our brothers and sisters in that sense of being in God's family. But as Paul said, we are all the offspring of God in Acts 17. We're made in the image of God. Even bad people, criminal people, tyrants, demonized people, they are made in the image of God. And you can't curse them and bless God at the same time. 
in verse 9. It says, with the same mouth we bless God and then we curse the people around us. But we curse the men around us and people around us, but they are made in the image of God. And I cannot curse them and bless God. Right? That's what it's saying. So, it's not hard to think of, you can tell a joke in China about a man and his wife and a dog. They will laugh about the joke the same as in Russia and Hungary and here. Why? Why do we have a sense of humor? Why do we have that? We are made in the image of God. We are like, we are, there's something about God in us that is, there is a similarity. There's something about us and God that is similar. We are made in his image. Isn't that amazing? When Jesus came into the world, it says in Isaiah 55, turn there with me, please, to that text. Isaiah 55, verse 8. My thoughts are not your thoughts. And there's a couple of reasons, a couple of things that we catch ourselves with when we know God's thoughts, when we learn his thoughts. How does God think about the world? How does he think about it? Here's a, here's a short lesson. You have, this is interesting, how does God work? And I have like two two little thoughts, two examples from the Bible that may provoke your thinking. You have a very good man, his name is Job, and what God does to him is very bad. Isn't it? I mean, in the period of time, the sufferings of Job were bad. But God did it for his reason. He doesn't even tell us what the reason is. He doesn't even tell us. We will learn in heaven. We see Job's uh, blessing. We see his promotion. But still, the suffering was horrible. Whenever you suffer in this life, you cannot look for a reason. You have to trust God and his character. Because... Because it doesn't work like that. Like you can't find the reason. You have to go beyond reason and live by faith and trust him. Later he can tell you why the suffering was so great in your life or why you were heartbroken. Or He can, he, he probably will. It'll be clear in heaven, but in this life, we see through a glass darkly. In this life, we're called to live by faith. So in one case, you have Job, who is a righteous man, and he has a bad time. And then over here, you have a bad man. I don't know what man I want to use. I, I just make up, just put here a bad man. And God gives him a lot. He gives the bad man a lot. Maybe we could use Psalm 73. Why does he give a bad man good, a good time? Why, why does he do that? His thoughts are not our thoughts, and his ways are not our ways. Look at 55, 8. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So you take uh, a homeless man in New York that has very great troubles on many levels, and God giving him grace, God changing his life, 
God saving him, God promoting him, taking him off the street, and doing something like that, that we see in the Gospels, where Jesus is doing it, quite often it's happening, that God is the God of all grace. And this is one thing that isn't in our thoughts. We are not generally grace-oriented. We don't know grace. We have to learn grace. We're predisposed to guilt. I wake up in the morning. I might wake up in the morning. You might wake up in the morning and be guilty because it's our nature. But God is saying to us, and, and in the weekend we had the video, His Name, or He Is, rather, and all his names, Pete Westera said, all his names are like God crying out to us to say, I am enough for you. I am what you need. I am a door. I am a shepherd. I am the rock. I am the tower. I am the grace. I am the answer. I am God. I am here for you. I care about you. I am the comforter. I am your power, your strength. I am the way, the truth, the life. All those Names of God. Beautiful. So I'm excited about missions. And the reason why is because in my heart, I can see people. I can see them I, I, in our hearts. We can see people. And I want God to put it in my heart, which people, you know, where to go what to do, how to pray about it, how to think about it. And this is why I am stirred up about it, is because the God, the God of all grace, so we'll put here the word, this is one of the things that, that evades us, kind of, in our personal heart. He loves me, he loves me, I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. What a way to identify yourself. The identity of people, I am doctor so-and-so, identity, I am pastor so-and-so. I am the apostle John. I am the one that walked with Jesus. I am, I am this, or I am, the, I am Mr. So-and-so. I am, or, or did, what did, uh, what did John say? Yeah, he said five times, I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. Identity. So here, here's the last point here. Um, why do I want to go to a Buddhist country? Because they don't know. They don't know that there's a personal God that loves them personally, that he loves them paid for their sin. I know it's a different religion. I know about the religion, actually. I can discuss it, and I understand it. I know how they think. I, I mean, because you study it, you go there, you understand it. They don't have the message of grace. They don't have it, but we have. Um, it's exciting to think about it, what grace can do when somebody realizes they are loved, they are forgiven. You know, there's a, there's a way of counting your sin. It's like this, like um, you could say, I, I have... Uh, lied, I have killed, murdered, I have, it's actually murder in the Hebrew, it's not killed, and then a line goes through it, but you can see what was done, I lied, this is like I sinned, I lied, and then there's a line through it. The other, the way it's written in Colossians 2, 15 is that Jesus blotted out the, the, the rules 
not only my sins, but he blotted out even the ordinances. They aren't even there on the page. It's like, here's, here's, there, there's your, the record of your sin right there. Like it's not even on the, there isn't even a record of the ordinances. Not to mention what you have done and it's, it's out, is like scratched out. But this is like blotted out. This is the blotted out, the, the ordinances that were holding us accountable. It's over, it's gone by grace. For Jesus took it, so we don't. My thoughts, we could say to God, Lord, the Great Commission, really? Like we have to, we go? Like really? I, I, can't you do it a different way? Isn't it a different, it, it seems so pedestrian, so kind of, pedantic, I guess is a word. It's so, like, like, so weak. It's so poor, the message. And the Lord says, no, my thoughts are not your thoughts. I send you. I send you to other parts of the world. I send you. I have to say this tonight because I know that many, many of us, you've worked all day, you, you, you have things on your heart, you have things to, you know, in your life and everything, but I want, to, I want to say something extremely radical because that's God. He is, he is so, he, it is so amazing what he has done for us. It is so radical what he has done and then equipping us, and then saying, if you look at those people in India, they are made in the image of God. And my, my ways, my thoughts, are not your ways. It, don't worry about th these things. I will show you. I will send you. You will actually go. You actually go to Vietnam. You actually share the message on the street in Vietnam. And people will actually, they will actually find where you, your apartment is and sleep outside the door waiting for you to wake up in the morning. That's happened to me. That's not in Vietnam, but it happened to me in Hungary. It happened to me. And that was many years ago, and those uh, two young girls that did that are, are in the church there. And this is a long time ago. But I, it's not about me. It's a, of course, you understand and hear that. This is about enjoying the reality of the, the, the living God who had, has done something radical for us in, in giving us his son. Did he give us his son? Yes. No. Did. yes. What? He gave us his son. He gave us his son. And now we're free. We're free. We're free in the spirit. We're free to believe. We're free to give grace. To give more mercy and more mercy and more mercy. To give and give and to live like that. What do you need or where could I go or what is it that need? you need encouragement? I can help you. I can share with you. Uh, do you need a word in season? Do you need a good word? Do you need somebody to build you up? Yes, we can do that because we have been built up. We have been forgiven. Isn't that amazing? New life. Why do we come here? Because we want to hear about Jesus and his grace. We want to be built up in the spirit of God. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians 
And um, this will be the text. So I want you to, actually, I think we'll do it this way. Uh, it'll be 2 Corinthians 3, and we'll go into chapter 4, verse by verse, kind of quickly. We'll hit those verses, and that'll be our message tonight. So um, right now, could you minister to each other for a minute? And then they'll come and do the announcements and the offering. And so just share with your neighbor. Love them and encourage them and minister grace to them. Okay, um, just to recap it, um, we're made, people are made in the image of God in this lifetime, they're here, and they need the gospel of grace. They don't have it. Well, yes, they do, but, I mean, in parts of the world, but some parts of the world they don't. And Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send laborers with the gospel and share that message. And then the new birth happens, and they're born again, and they're in the family of God. 
and saved by grace. And it's a miracle of grace. It's a wonderful thing. And in the gospel, we see it happening. And then Jesus turning to us and say, you are my, my plan. You are the plan. You are the people. Like study, learn, walk with me. I will send you. I will send you from the local assembly. And you'll have a message. It's not the message of people. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My thoughts are thoughts of grace. I save you by grace. That's what we do. That's what our whole Bible college is about. That's what our churches are about. That's what our mission is about. That's what's in our hearts. That's what we want to see happen. So next week, we will have a week of prayer on the campus. And then we'll have our, our Sunday night. We'll have a, a missions night on Sunday night. Uh, and then um, and through the week, and we'll be praying, like, Lord, where do you want to? And we'll do this. Everybody, you, you can put, God can put it in your heart. Like, you might not go yourself, but you can say, you know, it's on my heart, this place. And we would like to know what that place is. We'll, we'll write it down. We'll, we'll be praying with you about it and thinking about it. And even place near Baltimore City. Maybe we did Richmond, you know, a year and a half ago, Richmond, Virginia, but it could be, you know, a place nearby here, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia could be somewhere, Westminster, you know, so... And then far away, really far away. Wow. Vietnam. Wow. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yes. So, Lord, we pray for this offering and bless the offering and the music and the night here. Jesus, your name. Amen. So I 
valleys There was Jesus In the shadows of the alleys There was Jesus In the fire and in the blood There was Jesus Oh, He always is and always was No, I never walk alone Do you mind if you would do that again? It seemed like too short, doesn't it? I thought you'd, you know, go one more. What do you guys think? Yeah, we love it. We're worshiping. Beautiful. Wow. Wow, there was Jesus. You know, one brother told me, they said, he said he was drinking. He left Jesus. He, he was a believer, born-again believer. He started drinking. For four years, he was drinking all the time, and he said, "He said, he said, I, he, he doesn't live here. He he was from another place, and he said, uh, he said I stopped. I said, how? how how did that happen? He said, I woke up one morning, and Jesus Christ was in the bedroom, and that and it was over." There was Jesus. Come on, imagine. Is that real or not? Can that happen? Can it happen? Why not? Is he the same yesterday, today? I don't, he, I, he didn't mean I saw him. What he meant was that the presence of God was so strong in the room. I was so convicted of my sin, and I stopped it. It would end it. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So I met him, and a couple of years later, I saw him here at a convention, and he told me, I've, I'm not, I haven't been drinking at all. From that day, from that day, it ended. Isn't that amazing? And there was Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Okay, let's listen to it. So I thank God every day. There 
Just a few quick announcements. First, I want to welcome anyone here for the very first time. If we could just um, introduce ourselves to you or, and vice versa. If you don't mind just raising your hand really quickly for us, just way up high. We just want to say hi and uh, also give you a little welcome packet from us. Anybody? Second time? It's okay. <laughs> Third, fourth, it's fine. Under five, we'll count it. Um, right here. <laughs> um, okay. So if uh, you didn't know already, today is Valentine's Day, and uh, so I'm going to have you turn to your neighbor and invite them to something that's happening this Saturday. So if you wouldn't mind, just turning to your neighbor and repeat after me. Um, hi, my name is... <clears throat> and um, I'd like to invite you to the fellowship lunch, okay? The fellowship lunch is happening this Sunday. Exactly, you guys know, wow. I don't even have to do this. Um, Sunday, February 18th at 1 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. It is going to be $7, but I got you. $7 for adults. Tell your neighbor. I didn't hear that part. You guys knew what date it was, but not how much it was. $7 for adults. It's going to be $4 for kids. Okay? So the, the little ones get a little bit uh, off because they don't eat as much. Uh, again, Fellowship Lunch this Sunday, February 18th. 1 p.m. at the Fellowship Hall, uh, $7 for adults, $4 for kids. Also, the GGCA basketball season is winding down. Aww. Uh, the JV boys in the middle school playoffs are happening on Thursday and Saturday. And then also next week is the varsity playoffs. So that'll be exciting if you want to check that out. Uh, details for that is going to be on ggca.org. Um, yes, uh, if everyone could, wouldn't mind just standing with me. Um, I believe Pastor Shell is going to come up and maybe read a verse to us. So please um, stand. Okay. You want to uh, just say a word of encouragement to your neighbor for a minute? Go ahead. We'll just preach for a few minutes.
Okay, you may be seated just for a few minutes here. Mark 12. You may be seated. All right, so uh, Mark 12, verse 41. Very, very, very short, I think, message, but, but just uh, to tell you right away what it is. It's about, about God's character, his nature, his love for us, grace. Grace, how he looks at your life. Verse 41, Jesus sat over against the treasury and be beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. Uh, we just had a Super Bowl, I think $9,000 for a ticket. I heard that number, I had somebody look it up. $9,000, big money, huh? Turn to your neighbor and just say, hey, pick up your game. Come on, what group are you hanging out with? What group are, now, now Jesus is at the treasury at the temple. He's at the treasury of the temple and he's looking and he sees the rich people. The rich people are coming, big money, rich people. All right, you're not used to that, I know, but but there are that, that does ha there are people that have huge amounts and so on, and they put the money in the treasury. And there came a certain poor widow, verse forty-two. A certain poor widow, a little woman, thinking of it doesn't say she's little, but she's poor. She threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And somebody gave me the little copper, little pieces of copper metal that um, were from that time. I have them somewhere in my office in plastic, right? Okay. What, what's the meaning here? It's this woman has a heart. She has a heart. She has value. She's made in the image of God. If she's poor, but God, God sees her. She's made in God's image. And, and she has his attention. She doesn't know it. Like she doesn't know, but he is drawn to her. He sees her. He knows her. He knows what's going on. He knows what's in her heart. She has a heart. It's beautiful. You know, when God looks at the world, he sees a lot. He sees people, Buddhist people, Islamic people, Hindu people. He sees communist people. He sees bad people. He sees good people. I mean, the morally, I mean, relatively good, when actually no one is in an absolute sense, but you understand what I'm saying. He sees, he knows, he cares. He died for the sins of the world. He died for the sins of every human being. He died for us. He loves the world. And he says, I blot it out. I take care of it. I remove. All of the, all of the penalties against you are removed, nailed to the cross. I save you. You are saved by grace. This is me. This is God. Sometimes we have to like step back from our little world of measuring and analyzing and figuring out and being guilty and worried about things and troubled and everything. Step out of our world of like that small world of guilt and fear and worry, and touch God, touch Jesus. I mean, Jesus, touch us with your grace and tell us what it is. Tell us who we are. Tell us that my two pennies have your, your attention 
that you care, that you see me, that you know me, that you know my name, you know my name, Lord, God, you see my face, my face and your face, Psalm 27, yes, I am God that loves you. Now, we're, we become very good at living the Christian life. We are very good at it. We, like, learn it. We learn how to do it. We learn how to talk and how to act and everything. But inside, empty. Inside, maybe lonely. Inside, maybe afraid. Inside, I remember when we were raising our family, and I read a little bit about it today from another book, not about our family, but a man raising a family his daughter didn't come home at night and um, was taking birth control pills and she's like 15 years old and he's a Christian and brought her up in a Christian family and he's looking out the window in the middle of the night waiting for his daughter to come home and she doesn't come and how it rips the heart out of a parent. It rips your heart out. How did this happen? How could that, it didn't happen to us, but I'm just saying, we know as people how much we can be afraid of things. We know as people how, how life could go in a way we didn't expect. We need to realize that. But, but this is the value of our faith. The value of our faith is that we are learning as God speaks to us that his grace is there, that he's there, that he's with us, that he's with us in this life. And with this poor woman, she has two pennies, but in her heart, like she's giving it. And this is what Jesus says, verse 40, 43. And he called unto him his disciples and said unto them, and I would like to say this to us about that, and I'm finishing pretty soon here. Jesus calls you to, to him, and he says, I want, to, I want to blow your mind. I want to blow your mind. I love that. Come on. Lord, come on. Tell me. What, what, what's going on? Tell me. Blow my mind. He goes, I will blow your mind. Do you see this little woman? There's poor woman, nobody notices her, knows her, could care less about her. Uh, she can discard her. Nobody will miss her. I would miss her, Jesus says. I would miss her. If she's so valuable to me. She is so precious to me. Yeah. That's beautiful. Look at verse 43. He called the disciples over, he said, that this poor widow, I say to you, has cast more in than, than any kind of Super Bowl money, any big contracts, any big bucks. She has cast in more than all they that have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her life, all her living. All right, let me finish here. I believe if we could know the nature of God, our joy is, is, is inextinguishable. You cannot get rid of it when we, we find the nature of God. I believe when we find grace, grace unto that mountain, Zechariah 4, 7, I, I find when God says, out, out, and the demon goes out, and we realize we are in the presence of God, we have joy unspeakable. We have a freedom and a liberty. We're not afraid. We're not afraid. It's amazing. To live in this world and not be afraid is incredible, but you're not afraid. To live in this world with real freedom deep in your spirit, you are free. You are free. You can run around and enjoy life 
and share love and give grace, you are free. When you get hurt and you don't hate, of course you hate, you process it, but you know God does not hate, God loves, God gives grace, I need to forgive, I learn about forgiveness, I find that I give mercy, I get mercy. I find as I believe God, I get joy. And I could say that I find when missionaries go out on the field and they are sent, they say this was the greatest time. It was unbelievable what happened, how God spoke to hearts and how the gospel was preached and what a joy it is. But I don't have to go, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying we have something and, and that grace is what we stand in. It's what we grow in. I want to relearn it. I relearn. Blow my mind, Lord. Come on. Talk to me. Tell me. And he tells me in Matthew 20. He tells us in the scripture. And that we'll finish with that. A guy needed some Latinos to work in his garden, so he went to Home Depot. He went there at 8 in the morning. He got some Latinos. They're the best workers in the world. They get in the back of his truck, he drives to the garden, and two hours later, these guys are great, I need more. I go back to Home Depot, I go get, pick up a couple more. And he does that through the day. Last, last hour of the day, four o'clock in the afternoon, he goes to get two more. In the beginning, he said, I'm gonna pay you for the day, whole day wage, one denarii. At the end of the day, he lines up all his workers. Who does he pay first? If he wanted to hide it, he could pay the first guys one denarii, one denarii, and then later. But he starts at the end. He starts at the four o'clock guys. The four o'clock guys, he hands them a shovel, they move some dirt, they have a coffee, they put, they're done in an hour. He gives them the whole day wage, one denarii. They give them the whole day. By the time he gets it, they get one denarii, and they go, what? why are you, you give him the whole, and we got, he said, didn't I agree that you would get the day wage? And if I want to give him grace at the end of the day, that's my business. You calling me evil because I'm good? Because I give grace. I give grace to people that don't deserve it. People that work at the end of the day and have a coffee and move the shovel from here over to here. That's all they did. <laughs> then have sit down, we'll talk. Have a coffee, and here, here's a whole day wage. Whole day wage paid to you. That's Matthew 20, parable, and it's about grace. We are objects of grace. We learn grace. We grow in grace. We need grace. I don't care how long you've been a believer. You need to be saturated with grace and then give it out and give out grace. Our country has a problem because people are afraid and worried and guilty and empty, but you aren't. You are filled with the Spirit. You are a gracious person. You are a forgiving person. You are a loving person. You have a ministry. Yeah, you, you have a ministry. You have a ministry from God on this earth to people made in his image who need him. Okay, amen. Would you pray with me? Lord, we could say, go, go, in Jesus' name. Go, so we could say to the demons, out, out. We could say to bad habits, it's over. We could say, grace, grace to that mountain, that mountain that becomes a plain. It's a huge mountain, it never leaves, it will never go anywhere, but grace says, grace, grace, God is here, and the mountain becomes a plain. Our habits are gone. Our bad habits are gone. They're gone. Stop smoking. They're gone. Stop drinking. They're gone. Stop lying. They're gone. Stop being depressed. 
empty, complaining, moping around, unbelieving, is gone. The God of all grace is able to establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. Lord, to cancer, it's gone. In Jesus' name, by faith, we pray. Just gone in Jesus' name. And then send laborers into the fields, we pray. In Jesus' name, this summer, lead us, please. Where to go and who to go and how it works, we ask it. And thank you for it, in Christ's name. Amen. All right, would you all just stand? Be very excited in the Lord and thankful and praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus. And say, out, out, go ahead, say it, out, out, you're out of here. Over, done, gone. And then give your neighbor a big hug and encourage them in Jesus. And you're dismissed. Or no, wait a minute, we're going to sing, come on. There's going to be a wrap here in 20 minutes or so with Pastor Ronaldo and Pastor Matt Garrett. Um, and uh, yes, Lord Jesus, thank you for this evening. Just bless us as we go and uh, uh, just teach us more about this grace. Teach us more about this radical grace and the radical love uh, that you have for us, God. Um, just bless us as we go. 
In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You are dismissed.